Before we begin section 1.4, make sure you completed the lesson check for section 1.3. In today's lesson, we are going to be learning about properties of real numbers. The first thing that we need to define is what an equivalent expression is. So equivalent, another word for equivalent would be equal. You can see that the prefix of both words equi is the same. It means equal to each other. So the definition for equivalent expressions is this. Two algebraic expressions that have the same value for all values of the variable. The first property that we're going to take a look at is the commutative property of addition and multiplication. What this says is you can change the order of what you're adding or multiplying and you'll still get the same result. So you want to make sure you fill in the box right here, um, the algebra and also the example. A plus B equals B plus A. So an example of that would be 18 plus 54 equals 54 plus 18. You get the same exact answer. For multiplication, we have a times b equals b times a. An example of this would be 12 times 1 half is equal to 1 half times 12. A real life application of the commutative property would be pretending that you're commuting to school or to work in the future and you're passing another car. Well, you're still the same two cars that are right next to each other or right in front of each other, but the order has changed. So that's an example of the commutative property. The associative property. In this property, what happens is you just change the grouping, basically. So grouping symbols that are common in algebra are parentheses. And you can see that you see a lot of parentheses in the algebra and also in the examples in this purple box right here. So we have a plus b plus c equals a plus b plus c. The only thing that changed was where the parentheses were. The order did not change. Same thing with the multiplication. a times b times c equals a times b times c. So the examples are to the right of that. When you plug in the numbers, you get the exact same thing on both sides. And you can see at the very bottom there's a little picture of some um, little guys that are holding hands and they're in a group. Uh, another word for associate is group together. Uh, people that work together are called associates. So you can think of this little picture when we are talking about the associative property. It's all about the grouping. Another property is called the identity property of addition and multiplication. So that's that first purple box right here. In addition, what you're doing is you're just adding zero. Well, what happens when you add zero to anything? Nothing. So you can see right here, if you add zero to five and three-fourths, you get five and three-fourths. If you apply the identity property to multiplication, you're multiplying by one. And when you multiply by one, the value stays the same. We're right here, just in case you got lost. So if we multiplied 67 and 1, you get 67. That's why it's called the identity property. The value does not change, whether you add 0 or multiply by 1. Another property is called the zero product property. Uh, what's nice about this one is when you multiply by 0, the answer is 0, no matter what number the other number is. When you multiply by 0, you get 0 as your answer. And the last property is called the multiplication property of negative 1. When you multiply a negative 1 by 9, you get negative 9. So when you multiply a positive and a negative, you get a negative, as you can see in that example. But if the number was a negative 9, I'll write this down right here so you can see negative 1 times negative 9, what would you get? a positive 9 because we use our multiplication rules and we know that when we multiply two negatives you get a positive. Alright, we're ready for our first example. What property is illustrated in each statement? Well, we're multiplying by 0, so we're using the zero product property.
in part B, you can see that we are having parentheses. Remember, that's grouping. So we're using, oh, wait a second, are we adding or multiplying? We're adding. So this means that we have the associative property. of addition. And the last thing, part C, we have 10x plus 0 equals 10x. Did the value change at all? No, so that means we have an identity property. And are we multiplying or are we adding? And we're adding. So identity property of addition. In example two, we are going to be using these properties that we just discussed to calculate the total of going to the movie. You buy a ticket, you buy a drink, and you buy popcorn. What's the total of all of that? And you cannot use a calculator. So first of all, let's write this down. We have 7.75 movie ticket and a 2.40 drink and 1.25 popcorn. So let's put some grouping symbols around this. Well, by our associative property, we can change the grouping symbols, and we can also use the commutative property to reverse the numbers inside the parentheses. So I'll show you what I mean. 240 plus 775 plus 125. Do you see how the numbers are the same? It's just a little bit different order. Now we're going to change the parentheses. So we're going to have 240 plus 775 plus 125. We're going to group it around there. Now why did I choose to put the parentheses around those two? Take a look at the decimals. Those are quarters, so they combine really well. So if we combine that, we would get 7 plus 1 is 8, and then we have 75 cents and 25 cents, so that's another dollar. So what's 8 plus 1? 9. So that value is 9. This is 240, and when you add those together, you get 1140. So that is the total of your movie trip, which is actually pretty affordable compared to what's going on right now. Okay, on to example three. We need to simplify this expression. We have the expression 5 times 3n. We can use the associative property to group the like terms. 5 and 3 are like terms with each other because they're both just regular numbers. And then we can use our order of operations to do 5 times 3, which is 15. 15n is the answer. In example 2, we have the quantity of 4 plus 7b plus 8. First we're going to change the order inside the parentheses. The whole goal is to get the 4 and the 8 together because they're like terms. 7b plus 4 plus 8. And now we're going to change the parentheses and shift them over to the right. So 7b plus 4 plus 8. What's 4 plus 8? 12. So we have 7b plus 12. And on to example part C, we have 6xy over y. So first of all, what number is in front of that y in the denominator? Well, we can always assume that there's a 1 there. What we're doing here is we're separating the y's because they're like each other. And wait, what's y divided by y? Well, anything divided by itself is always... 1. So now we just have 6x times 1. And what's that? 6x. And we're done with that. Okay, moving on to the last page of notes for this section. We're going to be talking about deductive reasoning. And deductive reasoning 
is the process of reasoning logically from given facts to a conclusion. Deductive reasoning. So feel free to pause the video right now to write that definition. A counterexample is an example showing that a statement is false. So when you want to prove something is false, you must give a counterexample. One counterexample is necessary to prove that a statement is false. So you'll see what a counterexample is in, in this last example right here. Is the statement true or false? If it is false, give a counterexample. For all real numbers a and b, a times b equals b plus a. Well, that might sound like gibberish to you right now, but let's just plug in a couple numbers and see if it works. How about let's say that a equals 5 and b equals 3. So let's plug in the 5 wherever you see an a and plug in a 3 wherever you see a b. What's 5 times 3? 15. And what's 3 plus 5? 8. Does 15 equal 8? No. So this is a counterexample. So the statement that they said is false. And that is the counterexample. And part B, for all of your numbers A, B, C, the quantity A plus B plus C is equal to B plus the quantity A plus C. Well, What's happening here? We're changing the order and we're changing the grouping. Well, we know by the commutative property and the associative property that we're going to get the same answer. So we're going to write that true. And if you don't believe me, you could pl plug in random numbers for A, B, and C and see if it works. And we need to say why. When adding, the order does not matter. you'll get the same answer. Alright, we completed this section. You can stop right here um, and we'll do the lesson check for this section after we go over the problems together during class.